Okay, so with our first example, we're gonna do something that's really practical and something that's very common and go through the steps and the stages I would take to guarantee that the sampled instrument that we make stays in key with our song. And this is something that a lot of people mess up on for a variety of reasons. It makes a lot of sense why people mess up on it, but we're gonna be super strict in this video. You don't have to be as strict as this when you're working with your own samples, but this is a good technique to be aware of. We're barely gonna to touch any of the parameters in the actual sampler in this video, but this is one common example that, um, and, and common technique, common use of a sampler that you see. So right now we have some drums and some bass. And what I know from just zooming in and looking at the title of this audio clip is that this is in the key of A minor. Now, that's not important necessarily, or it's not important yet, but it will be because we're gonna now try to find some kind of like a vocal loop that has a portion of the sound that we would like to sample to either create something rhythmic or actually maybe create like a little melodic line using that sample as the source. So if I go into my sample browser, this is the one that I wanna use. Let's listen to how it sounds right now. This is the full loop. We're not gonna use the full loop, but let's just hear what it sounds like in relation. And honestly, that sounds fine for right now. You can tell that maybe it doesn't match up or sync up perfectly in terms of uh, pitches and notes that are being played. But because all we have is this bass line and it's not super complicated, you could get away with this and it would sound fine. The danger, and this is often what happens, is people just kind of go, all right, yeah, that sounds good enough. But then as you continue on with your track and you really lock it into A minor with whatever else you're adding, whether it's virtual instruments or more samples, you you can then start to get a little bit of confusion, a little bit of dissonance that you're not necessarily going for. So in this example, we're gonna be super strict and we're gonna guarantee that this breakdown, whatever part of the sound that we use is staying in A minor. And that all has to do with root key, which we will talk about in a second. So let's drag this in first and foremost, just as an audio uh, track. And I'm actually gonna go and I'm gonna, instead of stretch, I'm gonna go into raw and I'm gonna solo this and I'm just gonna listen for what part of the sample I wanna use. Break, 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 break down. So for me, it's that little bit at the end that I find the most interesting and probably what I'm going to be able to reuse um, the most effectively when I create my sampler instrument. So I'm just going to isolate that part and let's make sure that this has it all. We're in raw. Okay. May not need that little bit at the end. And we're getting a tiny bit of a click, so I'm just gonna go ahead and auto fade. And I'm cool with that. And again, once we go into the actual sampler, we can then change where our start playhead goes, where it ends, et cetera. So I'm fine with this. Now, what I need to figure out, and I need to look at the name of this clip. This is telling me, and you don't necessarily need to do this yet. You're gonna figure this out either way. This is telling me that we are in the key of E major. So we have A minor, we have E major. This might be an E, this might be any key that's in, or any note, I should say, that's in E major. What's playing as this bass line, I'm sure there are some A's, but there's some variation in that as well. So a lot of times what you'd want to do just as a, as a good practice for yourself is to figure out what are all the notes in A minor, what are all the notes in E major, and how many of those overlap and how many of them don't. Because if you see that a lot of them don't overlap, what I'm going to do next is actually much more important. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's first and foremost just grab uh, or put in the notes that are in A minor. So when you want to figure out any minor key, the easiest way to do it is just to start with A because it's all the white keys. Okay, so A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and we can go back on top with A. Okay, so that's A minor. If we wanted to know what C minor is, we just make it so that that root key is at C minor. Okay, so minor is all about the intervals. There's actually other notes that you often use when you're working in minor, uh, especially when you're trying to like finish out a phrase or whatever, but that's beyond the scope of what we're covering now and really not that important. I just wanna know what is A minor and I wanna know what is E major. So to find E major, I will start by actually putting in C major, 
which is all of the white keys going from C to C. So it's different interval relationships. And now to figure out what E major is, what I would do is I would take this and I am now going to go into E major. So I'm going to go and set my root as an E, okay? And now from there, what I could do is I could take these and I could just like shift these all down so that we get into that same range as where our other guy is here to now see what uh, lines up and what doesn't. So we've probably overlapped one of our E's. That's fine. Doesn't matter. So what we look at is we say, okay, A and A, those match up. B and B, those match up. That's good. C does not match up. D does not match up. E does match up. F does not match up. G does not match up, right? We're seeing that these are not the same. And this is very important because this is telling me that these keys are not really related. They're not very closely related. There's a lot of differences. So I need to check and figure out what the pitch is or what the pitch variations are in this little sample that we are going to be using because I got to make sure that I can lock that into A minor. So what I'm going to now do with this clip is I'm going to use a free plugin to do this, okay? And I'm going to use the Melda production. We're going to do a combo. Let's go Melda, and we want auto pitch, and we're also going to use the tuner. So with the tuner, and you have to be kind of careful with this, if I loop this, let's watch what the tuner does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's showing us G sharps and it's showing us A's. So the A is good. That's a good sign for us, right? Because we're in A minor. But uh, did I already delete that clip like an idiot? Let's go back so I can just go and show you. So when we go in now, what about that G? Ooh, so that's a problem, right? We were getting a G sharp. We really need it when it's changing to go to G instead, just so that we're safe when we're playing back. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and I'm going to use the auto pitch, okay, which will adjust the pitch. Now depth is gonna determine how accurate this is. So let's loop this. And right now it shouldn't sound really any different. We're not asking it to really do anything. We can again see A's and G sharps. Depth is gonna really lock it in once I choose. So chromatic means all the keys. It's gonna go A minor. And even though it sounds a little robotic, I'm okay with that based on what I'm going to do. If you don't want to sound that robotic, you can pull the depth back a little bit. But in theory, what this has now done with this plugin on here is it has locked this and it has locked it 100% into the key of A minor. If I bring it back a little bit, which is fine, it's going to keep it in key. We'll go to about 80%. And let's listen to it without. So you can hear it. it's a little robotic. I'm okay with that though, for what we're going to be doing next. So now that we have that, let's go ahead and let's bounce that clip out. And remember, let's see, what is it showing more of? Is it showing us more of the A or the G? To me, it's showing up more of that A, and that's what I'm going to end up using as my root. It'll be interesting when I try to auto detect this, what it tells me. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bounce this. Uh, Pre-fader is fine. All of this is fine. Hit OK. Now this should have that auto-tune effect on it. And it does. And now what we're going to do is we're going to grab, we could actually, I think, take this and just drag it down here. That's actually going to recreate an audio track. So we're going to have to actually bring in a sampler. Okay, so we have the Bitwig sampler. Now I'm going to drag and drop this clip in. All right, so now when I'm playing on my keyboard, we're hearing that, and I'm going to bring the velocity sensitivity down just so it's louder. I'm playing different keys. We're not hearing it key tracking yet, and that's because we haven't set it to key track. Now, with this clip, what I can do is I can right click and I can have it detect the root key, and I'm very interested to see how it's going to detect this. Let's see. So it's giving us a G3 and almost locked in perfectly. So in theory, if we had used that auto-tune and we'd gone like 100%, we probably wouldn't have this sense range. And I'm not really even that concerned with it if it's just off by a little bit. So now it's giving us G as the root, okay? And now we are key tracking. That automatically turns it on when you ask it to detect. And now when we play a G3, 
It's playing back regular. Now, I personally think it's more of an A, so I might go and adjust this to A. And now when we play, we can hear that like so. All right, so now in the context of this, I should be able to, as long as I play keys, notes, that are in A minor, it should sound nice with the rest of our track, assuming that we've gone in and we have a lot more parts and stuff that are playing. So let's just listen. Let's maybe hear what some stuff I can put in. And then afterwards, I'll probably pause the video and add some more effect processing to it. But let's just listen real quick and loop. <laughs> adjusting the start time. And we're on repitch mode, which is just telling us that if I play something lower, it's going to play back through the sample slower. If I play something higher, it's going to play it back faster. We have other modes that try to compensate for that, but this is the old school way that samplers work. It's the same way that the uh, repitch mode works here. Instead of stretch, which is trying to lock it, into key, keep the frequencies the same. Um, Repitch is going to change the playback, uh, the, the frequency of the playback based on the speed. Okay, so I'm just gonna try to see if I can think of something. Alrighty, so off camera, we edited the sequence a little bit, keeping everything very strict to a minor. We also did a bit of effects processing. Uh, this is what our instrument sounds like now. And then let's go ahead and listen to it in the context of the track. I'd probably even add a little bit of like either a filter sweep or a volume automation for those first two. Okay, so there you have it. That's a very practical use of the sampler where we're literally just using this to allow us to play up and down the keyboard and then we're doing a little bit more with the effects processing. But uh, this is a common practice and I thought I would start there because really all you have to do is know how to set your start and end points, how to set the root key, a little bit with the uh, ADSR, AHDSR in this case envelope, and then I added a little bit of that velocity sensitivity. Alrighty, thanks for watching and I hope you stick around for the next video.